Hey guys, this is Stacey Cunning Mom and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a review, recap slash review of Married at First Sight. We're in season 10 and this is a recap of episode 7. So in this episode, all the couples um, came back from their honeymoon and they're at the airport. Um, the couples were expected to move into their new homes. Um, the home that they're going to be sharing for the next eight weeks. And Zach decided that he is not ready to move in with Mindy. So he went back to his home and Brandon left Taylor at the airport. So Taylor was left on her own. She moved into the new home by herself. Um, Mindy also moved into the new home by herself. The other couples, they moved into their new homes and the next day they went back to their current home to see how each other lives and also to pack some stuff to take back to their new home. So we're going to start out with Zach and Mindy. Now, Zach is once again talking in circles, making no sense. He says that he wants to work out the relationship with Mindy but he doesn't want to live with her but he's doing nothing really um to prove that action speaks louder than words and with zach he is just all talk makes no sense says one thing does another they met separately with pastor cal and zach starts telling pastor cal about not feeling any attraction to mindy he goes through all these wonderful qualities about her but there's no chemistry there and chemistry cannot be manufactured now pastor cal said that zach said that he was attracted to someone that is intelligent and driven aside from the fact that mindy's a beautiful girl um i think he got someone that is intelligent and driven and they said that is why they matched him with mindy pastor cal asked zach if he wants to stay in this marriage and once again, he starts talking in circles. Instead of just answering the question, he starts talking in circles. And Pastor Cal is basically like, so I need you to just tell me, do you want to be in this marriage? And he said, yes, he is willing to stay in the marriage and try to and, and work it out. But he is not ready to move in with her. So... Yeah, you want to stay in the marriage, but you don't want to move in with your wife. You are legally married to this woman. Married couples, traditionally, I know people are doing all kinds of stuff these days, but you live in the same house with your wife. Couples may fight, one may sleep on the couch, one may sleep in another room, but they're in the same house. So Pascal's like, you know there are two bedrooms in the apartment. And he's like, he needs his own space. He needs time to miss her. Blah, blah, blah. Just a whole bunch of hogwash, a whole bunch of excuses of why he should not live with the woman, but he still wants to be on the TV show so he can get his 15 minutes of fame, or should I say eight weeks of fame. They need to get rid of Zach. They, when, when they have people coming on the show and they identify that they're not here for the right reasons, they need to get rid of them. Do not allow the other person who is invested in that marriage to go through this. She should not have to endure eight weeks of someone that is clearly not there for her. I think it's unfair and I think the show, they seriously, I, I get that they have their show planned out and they need to produce and they need their content. But this is someone's heart. This is someone's life. You should not allow someone to continue to be in a relationship and forcing it. They said they're not in the business of forcing people. But um, you know that this man doesn't want to be there. I, I see it. You're sitting in front of him, Pastor Cal. You see it. So shut it down. Don't force Mindy or don't allow it to continue. I'm not going to say force. I'm going to say, don't allow it to continue. You're the expert here. You've identified a fraud. Get rid of the fraud. Okay, I will exhale and I will move on to the next couple. Taylor and Brandon. This is another one. 
Um, fortunately, I do think Brandon wants to be here for a wife, really because Brandon is a private person and he does not like the camera. So I think he is trying to push himself um, to find a wife. So the fact that he doesn't like the camera makes me think that he is not here for his 50 minutes of fame. I think he is just a diva and he needs to bring it down a little bit. So Brandon left the honeymoon. They got back and he just disappeared. Taylor got to the house and she's like, I don't know where Brandon is. Um, we got to the airport and he was gone. So they also met with Pastor Cal and Taylor um, basically told Pastor Cal about his behavior, how he acted towards the crew, the production crew, the camera crew. And Pastor Cal was like, he knew what he signed up for. Like, duh, they're going to be cameras. They're going to be there. They're going to be documenting. You knew what you signed up for. So why are you whining about it? And here comes Brandon. He comes in with some flowers to apologize. Said that he knew he acted out of character. It's unlike him. And did apologize. And he wanted to, um, he wanted to move forward. But Brandon was kind of stuck on, of all the things that Taylor said to him, he was kind of stuck on the fact that Taylor said that she does not want to be married to an, a jerk. I'm not going to say the word um, because my daughter sometimes come across my videos. So, um, yeah. So, I'm not going to say the word. A dollar dollar. She said that she's, she doesn't want to be married to someone like that. And Brandon was kind of like stuck on that. So, he's just honed in on that. And he just took from all that, she didn't want to be married to him, right? That's how he internalized it. And he started acting out. He started lashing out. So Brandon clearly has to work on some things. I think Brandon needs <laughs> Brandon needs to work on, on some things. You can't just take one word that someone says and just harbor that and then lash out at them. So, I mean, tell, I mean it's a red flag. I do think it's a red flag, but... I am not writing Brandon off. Um, I think there might be some hope for him. But again, I do think the private thing, Taylor is not a private person. Brandon is a very private person. I think there's, there's going to be trouble there. This will come up again. There's going to be some, there's going to be trouble there. Any who's, they said their vows or they said an alteration of vows. Um, in the presence of Pastor Cal, and they agreed to move forward. I thought it was kind of cute. I need to do that with my husband. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cute. And they made some vows to each other to move forward, have a clean slate, and move forward and try to make the marriage work. So next, we're going to move on to Derek and Katie. Derek and Katie, now they started out real hot and heavy, but now Katie is looking kind of down. She honestly doesn't look happy. She looks... Um, the way she did in the first few episodes and when she was conflicted on whether she should get married or not. And I started seeing that on the last day of their honeymoon, her behavior just started to change a little. Now, when they met with Pastor Cal, Derek said that it feels like the honeymoon phase is kind of like faded out and now they feel a little bit more like roommates. And Katie said he actually said that to her like actually said that room called her a roommate and she was like no <laughs> not your roommate I'm your wife now Derek mentioned that he feel like he may fall in love in about six months to a year I don't know why he's putting a time limit on it I don't know why he is like holding himself back and but Katie wasn't very happy with that and you could tell that it made her sad because she is like that means, are you telling me that you can't fall in love with me in, in the next eight weeks? So she's kind of worried about that. Now, Katie brought up the ex in the presence of Pastor Cal. I'm kind of glad that it came up in his presence because he was able to ask the right questions um, so, that, so that Derek can get the right answers without there being any friction or any argument. I feel like if this had came up, Without him, it would have been a bigger deal, right? 
So I'm glad it came up in his presence. Pastor Cal asked her if she has moved on from the ex, if she is over him and resolved those feelings. And she said, yes. So then he asked her if the ex was to come back in the picture, if she knew what she would do. And she said, no. So that means you have not resolved those feelings, which we already knew. We knew that from the first two episodes when she was conflicted. If you if you were over your ex, you would not, it would not even be a question of whether you should get married or not. And it was clear that Derek had no idea about this. Based on his reaction, he didn't even know about the ex. So it makes no sense. She said that she's cut ties, but she's still in love with the ex. And Derek is here and he's like, now I feel like I'm in competition, which is true. He didn't sign up for The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. He didn't sign up to be competing for someone. He signed up to, um, he signed up for a wife that is solely dedicated to him and her heart does not belong to someone else. So Katie reassured them that there is no communication. She reassured Derek that there is no communication with the ex and that Derek is a much better man than her ex and she wants to be with him, she's happy with him. So, I mean, only time will tell uh, how she feels and how this will all play out. I think the ex is gonna have to resurface for us to actually see what, what Katie does. So we'll see how that goes. So our next couple is Austin and Jessica. Austin and Jessica, they are just happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> um, there isn't much to say. Um, there isn't much to say about them for this episode. They moved in together. They are happy. They seem to be compromising. Um, Jessica went to visit Austin's house and started making his bed and cleaning up his room. <laughs> So we'll see how they play out. I think they're going to have some issues there in terms of her being a little bit OCD um, in the cleanliness department and Austin being not so clean, so neat and tidy. Let's not say clean. Let's say tidy. I don't know. Probably means the same thing, but they may have some friction there. But the only thing that Pastor Cal really brought up for them, which I see um, it's not even really a, a big issue is money. Um, so the couples are supposed to discuss how much they make and Jessica makes more than him. Um, Austin seems to be okay with it. Jessica said she's okay with it when she was in the presence of Austin and Pastor Cal, but in her private um, interview, she said that she wanted someone that made more than her, but she also said that Austin is a very driven person and hardworking, so she see the potential there, uh, which I think is perfectly fine. There's always going to be, there's never going to always be a balance when it comes to um, couples making money. There's always going to be time when one person might make more and the other person might make more. And as you get promotions, one might surpass the other one. So in marriage, you just, you cannot be competing with your spouse. You guys are one so when they have a promotion and they get they start making more money than you or whatever just be happy for them the money is coming to your house okay so um hopefully austin is okay with that i know he's a man and some and men have their egos some men are okay with it some men are not so hopefully austin is okay with that and it doesn't cause an issue for them so next we're going to talk about mika and michael so they get back, they move into their, their new home, they get settled in, and then they go visit um, each other's house. So when they went to Michael's house, Mika was just complaining about everything. Now, this could be editing, but she was just seeing this. She complained about this, complained about that. Why do you have this here? Why is this like that? I'm like, Mika, calm down, girl. Michael was just... He seemed like a little bit, he seemed a little bit chilled. I have seen a change in his behavior. He seemed to have pulled back some and it could be just her personality overpowering his. So I don't know what's going on there. But when they met with Pastor Cal, um, they also brought up um, money and salary. And I guess when he first started the show or 
he she was making more than him. Mika said it's important that her spouse makes more than her because in her past relationships, she's always made more than them and she felt like she was carrying the weight. I personally think Mika is allowing her baggage from her past relationships to infiltrate her marriage. Um, just based on her behavior, the way she's acted, you can tell that she has been through some things and she's trying to make sure it does not reoccur in this one. So I get it. She's saying that she needs to make sure her spouse is making more than her. So I think he got a new, he got a new promotion or something. So now he's actually making more than her. So I guess when it first started, he wasn't, when they exchanged salaries, he wasn't. But now at that present moment, he was, he's starting a new position. And she was happy about that. I, it's kind of like how Jessica, in the presence of Pastor Cal and Austin, Jessica was like, oh yeah, I'm totally fine with it. Um, but in her interview, Jessica was like, she is not okay with it. Well, it just goes to show how honest Mika is because she straight up said she was not okay with it. But I also think that even if you feel that in your heart, I don't think that is a pressure you should put on your spouse, right? I just explained about promotions and one couple, it, it'll fluctuate. There, there will never be that balance that you want in a relationship. It will fluctuate. And I think she's putting a uh, pressure on him by flat out stating that she doesn't want to have to carry. What if your husband loses his job? You're going to have to carry that financial burden. All right. So, um, I am, I get her honesty, but I totally think she is in the wrong for making such a statement. So Mika, you're going to need to work on that girl. And hopefully you're, once you guys settle, if you guys do decide to stay together and your relationship settles, hopefully you have a change of heart because what are you going to do when you, if something happens in your relationship and your husband's not working, you're just going to quit the relationship. Like, what are you going to do? You, you can't think like that. You just can't. So the next thing to discussed was um, children. And she said she wanted two or three children. Um, Michael, they're on the same page with that. But Michael said he wants to adopt one because he was adopted and he wants to give back. I thought that was really cute. That was really good. And he discussed being adopted and that he needs that closeness and his love language. And he needs that physical touch. And he explains why he is like that. And Mika said that he is contradict like the things he says he contradicts himself so she just can't trust him she can't trust that he's what he's telling her is the truth they go back to the situation on the plane where michael says that he needs to have it if the relationship he needs to have it on the honeymoon if the relationship is going to last and michael still claims he did not say that mika is still adamant that he did say it and she is like see this is why I can't trust him because he's just lying. <laughs> anyway, Michael breaks down. The brother starts crying. He starts crying and she does console him. I thought that was, that was really sweet. Pastor Cal is basically like, um, you guys are going to have to move on from this. That was one thing. That was one bad thing. What are the other good things that has happened in the relationship? Focus on the good things. Forget about that one negative. Focus on the positive and move forward so they did agree to do that it's possible that whatever he said um she could have misinterpreted I it personally think he said it <laughs> but um i wasn't there uh so i do think they need to move on from that you can't just you can't just harbor that one thing and let that just poison your relationship so move on people move on <sighs> i don't know michael seems unhappy I hope he gets to a happy place. I hope they both get to a happy place, a place of harmony, um, so that they can have a fighting chance in this relationship working out. They're just very strong-willed. They're two strong-willed people. So I wish them the best. All right, guys, that is it. We are done. That is it for my review of Married at First Sight, season 10, episode seven. Um, I want to hear from you guys. Is there anything that I missed? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of my review. I want to hear from you. Let me know.
All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time. Bye-bye.